Hi, and welcome again to another edition of Market Analysis for today, July 9th of uh, 2024. I'm Giovanni Benecourt, analyst, trader, and educator with Vantage Markets, and this is being recorded uh, previous to the uh, open of the U.S. trading session. All right, before I get started, i also like to remind you that today I will be hosting a webinar. Uh, this webinar is going to be about how active traders approach and track the market. All right, we'll be looking at different you know, things uh, from risk management to strategies to uh, you know, building consistent habits. So I'll leave the, the link on the description for the, for the video. So keep that, um, you know, keep it in mind. All right, well, let's get started. You know, stocks are still on a remarkable run. For some, that's not great news. You know, it is what it is though. Both the S&P and the NASDAQ closed at new highs yesterday, refusing to buckle under a year of high interest rates. The Nikkei in Japan is also getting in on the action, closing at an all-time high today. Now, the magnificent seven stocks that drove up gains last year have bent this year, but are far from broken. Tesla, the biggest laggard, has advanced for nine straight days and erased all of 2024's losses. Apple also struggled for a while, but it's now up 80% on the year. Nvidia looked like it might hit a soft patch, but has managed to steady the ship. That sounds nice, but don't forget that it's actually a very hard time to be a stock picker. The narrow breadth of the increases means that unless you pick the big tech stocks responsible for all the gains, you're very unlikely to have been in the market lately. So with that being said, let's take a look at what you know, we can speculate to see as market fluctuation continues, I mean, as the market continues to you know, move higher. So let's raise our resistance level to 20,800. Okay. So this is the, uh, you no, know, this is the, uh, you no, know, this yellow line is actually the typical price that we have actually been uh, setting up. We set it up yesterday. So the typical price for you that, that know how to get it, you basically add the high, the low, and the close, and divide it by three the, of the previous day. Or in this case, since we did it yesterday, of Friday's close, which is basically what you want to do at the beginning of the week. So the first thing you want to do, you might want to do uh, on Mondays, is look at the uh, you know, Friday's fluctuation, okay, on a daily bar, or daily candlestick chart as we have in here in front of us and get that the typical price because the typical price of of that day of, of friday is where the market you know most likely fluctuated or acts as a pivot point and also if the market and the next day you know, next week is above that it, it will act as a support okay and if, if it's below that it will act as a resistance so in this case it is acting as a support because the market is up here and this is the typical price, all right? So again, you will get on Mondays, you will look at Friday's uh, you know, uh, trading range, look at the high, look at the low, and look at the close. You add those three and divide them by three, and that will be your typical price. All right, so let's get back into it. So as for today, yesterday we saw that, that nice fluctuation uh, to the upside, markets, you know, continuing to rally, making new highs, all right? So at this stage, it'll be a good idea to come in and figure out how much further of an extension can we see or have, an, have a, have use some of the technical tools to just figure out where will we could, where could we find or where can the, uh, let's say for, for example, the Fibonacci extension tool uh, can help us to find a uh, those levels resistance levels so sorry from the low okay from this low to uh today's high right or you, you can even do it uh as yesterday's fluctuation and then just extend the uh the uh, the tool to uh today's low all right here we go so basically the point thirty eight percent is a fibonacci number so 
we can expect for the market to you know, continue that extension to it. Now, the, the golden ratio is the point one, the point six one eight over here. So, which is basically the seventy four points above where we have placed our resistance for today. So basically, uh, we are in that range. Again, this is all new territory, so we don't have any previous levels of resistance to uh, for us to fall back on. All right, so keep that in mind. So anyway, uh, when when will the market do a correction? It is due for a correction, okay? Uh, it, it is due uh, for, for, for a pullback, a retracement. When will that happen? Will, will that happen today? I don't know, all right? So, but if you wanna continue being, you know, being bullish, aggressive, you no, know, just uh, look at this. That in in the context of the bonnier bands, okay, we seen that the bands are most likely like in a forty five degree angle, and also the market is walking the bands, meaning that the market is is touching the band and is staying close to it and is progressively you no know, you know, moving higher. So that's a lot of volatility. So right now, uh, we could expect you know some sort of of a continuation or perhaps also a pullback. So let's go since we are in new territory like again. Anything from here on is you know new. So as the market opens, we could probably come back and, re and revisit uh, the high uh, during the uh, New York, the uh, London session. Okay, so moving you know, looking towards the twenty thousand eight hundred. Now, if we do have it to have a pullback and retracement, then we could use a typical typical price as our target, okay? And I have my my support right below it, all right? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. That's for the Nasdaq. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, S and P five hundred. So the S and P five hundred when it loads, there it goes. All right. So the S and P five hundred. I didn't do the uh, Typical price for the S&P 500. Uh, I, I had left it for for just for for the educational purpose for the Nasdaq. But anyhow, we're looking also. Uh, I have placed that 5,640 as a resistance level. Okay, and we're also moving higher. So we moving higher. So I'm just gonna leave my resistance there because if we really didn't uh, violate it. We we didn't even come close to it. The high is 5,639, we're no, very shy, we kissed it. Uh, but in, initially, I still think that, uh, you know, it, it still has some, some more, you know, more room to move higher. So let's see. So being cautiously, cautiously bullish with it, be aggressive, be careful. Then we have the Dow yesterday, it did fluctuate above towards the 40,000 and then quickly retreated and it closed again in this flattish, Flattish uh, notion. I mean, the Dow is not in sync with its peers at all. Okay, uh, but it, it has had it has received volatility. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, you know, this is also you no know, very very low volume as you can see here. Very low volume. So again, the Dow is acting uh, as its own you know, with its own mind. So anything you know, you got. I, I wouldn't be trading it. Basically, I mean, you you could have made money here, okay? Boom, because it, you know it skyrocketed. It, it, this it, this is also like a nice setup, almost for a for a breakout, because you no know, equally highs, equally lows, okay? So like, anything could happen. So I I wouldn't be trading because again, you could get burned. You could be in the wrong side or you could be in the right side of the, of the trade. You never know. Now crude oil, uh, it opened up with the gap down on Monday and it continued to uh, to move lower. Uh, it's trading below eighty-two dollars now, so that it's trading below that psychological support level. So I'm still looking for eighty-one. So going with the you no know, interday Trump uh, trend, which is selling it now. Nat gas yesterday had placed the two forty uh, marker uh, target for it. It rebounded off the uh, two twenty, which in this scenario it also opened with a strong gap down. Okay, but anyhow, uh, continuing uh, being in the right direction of you know, buying it for, for right now. Gold was the one that gave uh, gave me um, a completely different story. I, I, I was anticipating for it to continue to move higher, but actually just uh, traded lower. It broke that support level that I had there. So I'm going to have to bring that puppy down and I'm going to bring it down to right about here. Okay. 
2340, right around there, okay? So let's see what will happen with the gold. Uh, I'm gonna bring down my resistance to 2390. This is the typical price. I did that, this one for, for gold, anyhow. So again, for gold, you know, you could go with the with the momentum that is is building, you know, that is, is building to the downside. That could be uh, one way, but I, I won't be trading it. Then we have silver, 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 silver. Come on, silver, All right? Silver. So silver up yesterday. You know, it also had, you know, it opened up with a gap down and it continued to move to a trend lower. Today, basically looking to stay within yesterday's range. So there's a lot of pressure uh, for, for, I think I'm, I'm actually looking at this to be as a, a sideways market for today. Okay. Then we have copper. Copper may have a big different, a little bit different of a story. And when it loads, uh, come on, copper, there you go, it loaded. So copper, actually not, I mean, it did, it has been uh, trending higher and it did occur a, a, sort of a little bit of a pullback retracement yesterday. And we had doji that this market actually kissed the upper Bollinger Band and it retraced. So I'm gonna bring down my level of support to right, right here. And I'm gonna look at this and say, that perhaps the metals are having some some tough time moving higher, so I'll be out of copper for uh, for today yeah. for now. Now we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin looking to recuperate itself uh, again. This is also another setup for a possible breakout. Okay, this is making equal highs, equal lows. So let's see if we'll see that nice trend and break up to the upside. I think it'll happen. With Bitcoin, the currencies, the euro. Let's see if it, if it'll be able to sustain that momentum to the upside and and stay above 108. Uh, it's looking to you know do give some more some of those uh, gains back. Let's see what will happen today. Uh, but I'm I'm looking at it and perhaps the dollar index will have more pressure on the currencies and the metals. So trend lower. Then we have the pound. We is also looking to stay north of 127.80. I'm actually looking to stay to stay around 128. Sorry about that. So again, I'm I'm thinking that it might be a shopping market today uh, for the currencies and the metals because the dollar index seems to be recuperating itself, having a more of a comeback after having plenty of days on the downside because yesterday the market did open with the gap up. So I to so keep that in mind. Uh, since we have already been almost here, I'm gonna move this resistance to 105, and I'm gonna bring my support to this almost double bottom created here. So that's it. As we see that the dollar index continues to move higher, we'll see uh, more pressure on the currencies and the metals. So keep that in mind. Have a great trade day, and I'll hopefully I'll see you later on today. My webinar is today at 7 p.m. UK time. Ciao.